Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue working with line plots. So our learning goal for today says, I can represent measurement data with line plots. The materials that you'll need for this lesson is just your lesson template that looks like this. So make sure you grab that before we get started. All right, friends, so here we go. We're gonna start with our application problem. It says the chart shows the length of straws measured in Mr. Hahn's class. So we're gonna answer some questions. The first one is how many straws were measured and explain how you know. The second part is what is the smallest measurement on the chart and the greatest? And the last question is were the straws measured to the nearest inch? How do you know? So you're gonna pause the video Look at the data in that chart, answer those three questions, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so my first question that says for A, how many straws were measured? Explain how you know. Well, 20 straws were measured, and I know this because there are 20 measurements on the chart, and each represents one straw. Okay, B says, what is the smallest measurement on the chart and the greatest? Well, the smallest measurement is two and three quarter inches and the greatest measurement is five inches. Question C asks, were the straws measured to the nearest inch? How do you know? Well, no, they weren't measured to the nearest inch because there are also quarter inches and half inches. So that means they were actually measured to the nearest quarter inch. So we, measure, we have measurements that are in inches, half inches, and quarter inches in this chart. Now, friends, we're going to take the same information that we just did in our application problem, and we're going to do that in our concept development. Okay? So let's represent the straw data from Mr. Hahn's class using a line plot. So here's our data, same data that we just did in the application problem. First, we need to determine the scale for our line plot. The first measurement should be the smallest measurement in the chart. Oh, we just did that in our application problem. So friends, what's the smallest measurement? Pause if you need time. If not, check back to your application problem. Yeah, the smallest measurement is two and three quarter inches. Okay, so I'm gonna put a green there so I know that's where I'm starting. Now, it says, what do you think will be the last measurement on our line plot? Yeah, it's that five inches, right? Because that's the greatest measurement. We talked about that with our application problem. So when you're doing your line plot, it has to start with the smallest measurement and end with the largest measurement. I'll put a red one for stopping there. Green means go, red means stop. <laughs> All right, friends, so look at the data in the chart. How do you know what interval we should count by to create our scale? So that's thinking about the measurements that we have. So pause the video, think about that for a second. How do we know what interval? Are we gonna do inches, quarter inches, half inches? What should be the interval for our line plot? What do you think? Yeah, well, inches would be the easiest, right? But not all of our measurements are whole inches. So we have to count by quarter inches because that's our smallest unit. All right, so to find out how many tick marks we need, we can count by fourths from two and three quarters to five. Each time we count, keep track with your fingers. So friends, for me, this helps me to just kind of draw it out. So I'm gonna call it just draw a quick number line. So I'm going to start with two and three quarter inches and I'm going to count up a quarter inch every time. Okay, so I know here that I would be at three, three and one quarter, three and two quarters, three and three quarters, three and, or I'm sorry, four, four and one quarter, four and two quarters, four and three quarters, and five. So then I would go through and I'm going to count my tick marks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten tick marks. Oh, but look here, friends. I have, I was kind of looking at the numbers that I wrote here, and I looked at my 
um, in my chart with all the data and I don't see three and two quarters and I don't see three, I'm sorry, four and two quarters. So what do you guys see that represents the same thing? Yeah, like I see three and a half inches and four and a half inches. Well, I know that two fourths is equivalent to one half. They're equivalent fractions. So I'm going to take those out and I'm going to label the ones that were actually from my chart. So now three and a half and four and a half because I have to use the measurements that are in my chart. But for my quick draw real quick while I was trying to figure out my quarter inches and count them, it was okay to say two quarters. But now I got to switch it to halves because that's what it shows in my chart. All right, so you're going to use the empty number line on your lesson template to label the scale for our line plot. Make sure the parts are equal and each measurement is labeled. So you're going to pause the video. Basically, friends, what you're doing is my number line that I have. You're adding it to your line plot, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So now it's time to record the data on our line plot. Okay, so here's what you have for your line plot. Here's our data that we have. How can we make sure that we add the data only once? Like sometimes you might get confused, right? You're like, oh, here's a five. I'm going to put that one on there. Oh, here's three and a half. Like how could we so we don't get confused and accidentally do the same number twice on our line plot? Yeah, we could cross off or check off each number as we add it to the line plot. So this is how I would do it. So let's say I want to find three because that's my first one in my chart up there. Now I'm going to put a little check mark next to it. You can cross it off with a line through it if you want to. Just make sure it's not too dark so you can still see what the measurement is. Okay. Now let's do the next one. So four is the next one in my chart. So I'm going to put my X on four and I'm going to draw a check mark next to it. I'm going to find four and a half on my line plot, put an X and check it off in my chart. I'm going to find two and three quarters on my line plot and give myself an X there and then check it off. And then three and three quarters, I'm going to put an X on my line plot and give it a check mark in my chart. Okay, so that's exactly how I would do it if this was me. If you want to go straight down in the columns instead of across in rows, that's fine. As long as you're not forgetting each one and putting a check mark next to it will definitely help you so you don't forget. So you're going to plot the rest of the data. Make sure to cross off or check off each measurement or each measure as you plot it on the line plot. So friends, you have to include even the ones that I did here for you. Okay, so pause the video, add all of the data in the chart to your line plot, and then click play when you're ready to go over to for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's what my line plot looks like. I have all of the data checked off in my chart and on my line plot is correct. So I want you actually really quick to pause the video and I want you to make sure that you have the same number of X's on your line plot for each one of the measurements. Okay, so pause the video real quick, double check to make sure your line plot looks just like mine and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, let's answer some questions. We're going to give this number line a title that tells what it shows. So what is this, this um, data represented? What data is represented on our line plot? Yeah, it's the length of the different straws, right? It tells us at the top of that chart. So we can label that as straw lengths. Okay, so pause the video, add the title straw lengths to your line plot and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So let's add a key to show what each X represents. So what does each X represent? It represents a straw, right? So we can label that as X equals one straw. And you have to be specific and say one because sometimes a line plot might be more than one. Okay, so pause the video, add your key of X equals one straw to your line plot, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. 
All right, friends, so let's also put a label under the number line to tell the unit our line plot shows. So if you look up in the top, remember, it's like next to straw links that tells us what the measurement is. So what unit did we use to measure? Yeah, we measured inches, right? So within our inches, we measured quarter inches and half inches as well. But overall, we measured in inches. So I can add that to my line plot on the bottom. So pause the video, add inches to the bottom to label the unit that we measured in. And then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So now that our line plot has a title, a key, and a unit label, Anybody who looks at the line plot will know what it's showing because they can look at this and say, oh, this is about line plots. They measured in inches. And every time I see one X, that means there's one straw. So it's always important to label your line plot with a title, a key, and the unit label. All right, so let's analyze the data in our line plot. So how many straws were at least four inches tall? So I want you to pause the video I want you to look at your line plot and figure out how many straws were at least four inches tall. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so when I look at this, I see that I'm going to just draw a box around it. You don't have to, but just for me to model, I need at least four inches tall. So that means anything that's four or higher or greater is going to be at least four inches tall. So then I would just count those X's. And I know that I have 12 straws that are at least four inches tall. All right, so how many straws were shorter than three and three quarter inches? Shorter than three and three quarter inches. So pause the video, look for that data in your line plot, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So here, I have less than three quarter inches. So I'm not including three and three quarter inches on this time. I need to find out what's less. So I draw that little box around there. I count my X's and I know that there are six straws that are shorter than three and three quarter inches. Which measurements happened most frequently? Now remember to find out most frequently, the more X's that means it happened more often. So pause the video, find out which measurements happened most frequently, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so here I have three in this column, or in this part of my line plot, and then I have three here. So that means four inches and four and a half inches happened most frequently. All right, let's look at another one. So which measurements happened least frequently? So pause the video, analyze the data in your line plot to find out which happened least frequently. So most frequently had the most X's. So what does least frequently, how many X's would that have? Just think about that. Pause the video, solve this problem, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so least frequently, I'm looking for this least amount of X's, which would be here and here with only one. So two and three quarter inches and three and a half inches, those measurements happened least frequently. Okay, so it's a great to be able to analyze the data in our line plot. So more X's means it occurred more frequently and less X's means it happened less frequently. All right, so nice work friends, representing data with line plots. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. Bye.